My name is DC Hoffman. And I'm Lolita Lopansery. And I'm Judith Jones. And you're watching Recipe Wars. So today we're going to be making caramel apples. I actually have a great recipe brought to you by Alton Brown. Like all the brown candies, this begins with a cooked mixture of sugar, corn syrup, and water. And I'm going to be making the more traditional candied apple, not to be confused with the jelly apple, which he actually does the traditional technique using corn syrup, water, sugar, and a little cinnamon. My version is a little less complicated than yours. <laughs> I am doing Carla Hall's version. I've got two words for you. Poison apples. Mm, nice. And she is using honey and heavy cream to make her caramel. And I love this recipe because she does an almost salted caramel apple. So my recipe is by Sarah Moulton. If you're too scared, you know, to make a hard caramel with sugar, you can cheat. I give you permission. By using the bought caramels, I've already started melting these, but you can see what they were originally. And she is a cookbook author, a TV personality host, and a lot of her recipes focus on really simple techniques, um, just like this recipe here for caramel apples. So the caramel apple that we're going to start off with is we, you can take any apple that you want to use. You can use the Granny Smith, you can do the Red Delicious, which is the most common. Um, this is the apple harvest season after all, so it's easy to get apples right now and at good prices. Best technique that you want to do, and Alton Brown points it out very quickly and easily, is every apple that you start off with is going to have a nice sheen to it. The best thing to do to take it off is to take a pot of boiling water and literally take your apples and put them in for no more than 15 to 20 seconds. This not only will get the wax off, it will also help in the process to keep the candy coating on your apple. The reason why they put the wax on in the first place is to give it a nice sheen and also it retains moisture that way. So you're literally just going to put those right back on there and you want them to dry off. That's a key because if you have them wet still, it's going to obviously not stick. Once you've actually done the taking off of the wax, they will look something like this Bing. right here. So it looks a little bit ugly, but this is what um, the Granny Smith apple looked like before. But either way, you're going to cover it with a really luscious caramel that you can't even see um, this dullish green anyways. Carla Hall actually advises to do exactly the same thing. Uh, dip them in water, dry, make sure they're dried off fully uh, before we're going to dip them in the caramel. The second pot now is going to be for my corn syrup. One of my favorite things he said about the recipe is, now the traditional one calls for using popsicle sticks or using any stick for that matter. He takes his disposable chopsticks, which I think is great because how many of us have extra pairs of disposable chopsticks lying around from when we've gotten Chinese food takeout? The other thing that Alton Brown does is with the apples, he actually takes his stick and instead of putting them in the top of the apple, he puts them actually in the blossom end of the apple. And the reason for that is A, it looks nicer in presentation so when you're actually serving it up, you have the caramel or candy disc on the bottom so when you flip it up it just looks that much nicer. And also when you're trying to go for a bite, when you're biting into the bottom of the apple it's a little bit tougher. This way it's an easier bite because you're going straight for the gusto on the top. I like that idea. No, it's a great oh. technique and he, he literally just takes his light corn syrup and we have 15 ounces of light corn syrup, puts it right in the pot. Another 14 ounces of granulated sugar. The other thing that he uses, he uses cinnamon oil instead of cinnamon. So um, with my recipe, I'm using already store-bought soft caramels. Using the soft caramels, it has a little bit of corn syrup in there, which is going to make it, as Sarah Moulton calls it, more tender. So not like a hard caramel, but soft and really chewy. I am using, as I said, one cup of heavy cream and one cup of honey. Now, a good tip she advises to do is in your heavy pan, just spray it a little with oil before you put in your honey and cream. And that means it'll stick less to the pan. In it goes. And you can also spray the container that you have the honey in if you aren't doing it straight out of the bottle, and it makes the honey come out easier. So she advises to bring our mixture up to a boil, and then when it's up to a boil, we're just going to turn it down to a minimum, and then give it a stir. And we're going to stir that consistently for about 20 to 25 minutes until it gets to the consistency that we want. What's so great about my recipe 
So you put your corn syrup, your light corn syrup, your water, and your sugar in here, and you literally just put it on a high heat, to medium to high heat, and just let that bad boy boil. It takes about mm, roughly 10 to 15 minutes, but once it starts boiling, it's gonna become clear, and it's going to dissolve on its own. Judith is stirring and waiting for hers to become a caramel. I'm kind of doing the same thing, and I just want to make sure that I am stirring it so it doesn't burn. So this is going to take about 10 minutes. In uh, my recipe, Sarah Moulton, she likes to use Granny Smith apples. The Granny Smith apple is actually a little bit more tart than like a Red Delicious, um, and it's better because your caramel is going to be so sweet anyway. So you want um, an apple that's more tart and kind of tangy to kind of curb that sweetness of the caramel. And Carla Hull advises to use Pink Ladies or Golden Delicious, but she likes Pink Ladies, especially the little small ones, because they are, again, more tart and crisp, and so that sweetness of the caramel just goes really well with the tart apples. Alton Brown also uses the Pink Lady. That's his personal preference. You want to use a less grainy apple and an apple that doesn't have that much of a waxy feel to it. So while we actually have our caramels still cooking to the temperature that we want them with our trusty candy thermometers, uh, you actually already have yeah. yours. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that my caramel isn't too hot, otherwise it's just going to fall off of the apple and make this like puddle of caramel onto um, my sheet pan. So I just want to make sure that it's cooled down a little bit and so that it'll hold onto the apple. But you can really gauge it by color. Uh, once it starts to look uh, brown and thick in viscosity, then by all means dip your apple in, you're ready to go. Just make sure that it stops boiling. And Carla Hall um, advises to get to a temperature of 265 degrees Fahrenheit. I think Alton Brown says like 230. We are going to cook our mellow creams to 230 degrees, which means they'll still contain uh, roughly 20% water and therefore will be quite soft. The very beginning starts off at 223 degrees, and that's your threading. And then it goes to firm ball, uh, soft ball, hard ball, soft crack, hard crack, and finally caramel. And with your candy thermometer, you don't want to touch the bottom of the pot, because then you aren't getting an accurate read on what you're actually cooking. You want to make sure it's away from the pot, and at the same time, just enough in the actual liquid that you're boiling. So that way you get a great and accurate read. So while they're still waiting for their caramel to become a caramel, I'm just dipping my apples into mine, just kind of doing this rotating, twisting motion. All that excess so it doesn't drip on, and then just dip it straight into whatever toppings of choice. And my temperature right now just hit 300, so I'm going to take my heat, turn that flame right off, and I am going to let the caramel basically sit. As you can tell, it's still bubbling a little bit. I'm gonna let it sit, I'm gonna pull out my thermometer. I'm gonna add in just a couple drops of cinnamon oil, just for flavor, boom. Now I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and then we're gonna use 15 to 20 drops of red food coloring. It smells like, like big red, like yeah. that gum, that cinnamon gum. It smells like heaven. <laughs> So now we're going to take our sheet tray. Now one of the techniques that he uses is he tilts the pan so you get a nice coverage fully on the apple. And I like to get it all the way to the top. Yeah. And you're going to just twirl it so you don't have that disc really far on the bottom. And look at that. That is beautiful. All right, well mine is finally done. It's been about 20 to 25 minutes. We've reached a temperature of about 265. So I'm going to take that off the heat now and just let it cool ever so slightly before we dunk our uh, apples in there. And look at that. That looks beautiful. Good it smells color. Good too. Smells good. All right, it's ready for dipping time. So I got my little apples here on skewers and we're just going to dip them in there. I might steal your technique. Uh, and use the tilted method. So she advises to toast your nuts. So we've got some walnuts, almonds, and peanuts there. So we've toasted those first. Let's dip them. We'll dip them in. And you can just kind of like see what you want. You can dip them in the, uh, the walnuts. Let's dip them here. I'm gonna do all three nuts. So she also advises to spray your parchment paper with a little oil. And of course, Last but not least, to make it this, the salted caramel that it is, we're just gonna put a little bit of our sea salt on our caramel mixture. So we just finished cleaning up and now it's on to taste which one is the winner. Well, I like this recipe only because of the salted caramel and she's got a good, she's got a good few tips and tricks in there. 
I really like all the nuts. I like that crunchiness with that caramel, the salt. And the, so let's just try it. Uh, sticky. Mm. So with that one, the caramel just sticks to the roof mm -hmm. of your mouth and your teeth. It's the honey. It's, it's, it's a softer caramel. It reminds me more of like a jelly. It's like kind of a nutty, caramelizing and honey feel. It's not abrasively Different. sweet. It, no, and of course with the saltiness. The saltiness yeah, just, that unexpected bite right there, I, I really like it. I do like the flavor. I do like the flavor of that. I just don't like the consistency. Going in. Don't break your teeth. Mm. And that's all of your analogue. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. That is amazing. Mm. How many licks mm. does it take to get to the center of your candy apple? Oh, that one. It's definitely easier to eat than um, Judith's. Apple. I love I love the cinnamon and the cayenne pepper adds that mm -hmm. extra kick to it. The flavor is definitely very good. That cinnamon and cayenne definitely comes back. I like that. All right, all let's right. try mine. I'll pick the, um, for sure. Mm. That is mm. definitely easier to eat than the honey caramel. Mm. Easier to eat. So it's, it's sweeter, I think, and also it's, uh, the texture is a lot, a lot, lot, lot softer. It's, it's, you can bite into it and not get any of that stuff stuck to the roof of your mouth, not get stuck to your teeth. It's like that loose caramel that comes right off. Ooh, so a big uh, question, who's the winner? I'm not a fan of candy apples, but I think yours, I, I'm turning into a fan, so I'm gonna vote for yours. I'll be honest, I'm also not a fan of candied apples, but this has just a really great flavor with that cinnamon and cayenne and the crunch of it, the texture. It's good. It's really good. It's really good. It's a I, unanimous decision. Candy apple, Alton Brown's recipe. First place. First place. Mine. Number one. What would you say is number two? Well, I really like the flavor of this. Just the salt and the caramel together, and then the crunchiness of the nuts goes really well. Um, it's just so unfortunate that the caramel is so sticky and um, sticks to the roof of your, your mouth. So it's a very tough call between mine and yours. Simplicity, I like yours. For flavor, I like yours. And so I would have to go with yours as being number two. Well, Lolita, it looks like you came in last, third place, but third place isn't too bad because you still made it in third. We're all winners. We're all winners. So it looks like first place goes to Alton Brown's recipe for the candied apple, mine. Second place would go to Carla Hall's with the honey caramel. Good job, Judith. Mm. And third and final, even though this was definitely the foolproof, simplistic way to make it, would be Sarah Moulton's with her store-bought caramels. Still a good call, Lolita. I'm B.C. Hoffman. And I'm Lolita Lopansery. And I'm Judith Jones. Please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our channel. This has been Recipe Wars. We will see you next time.